Octane is an OCaml library I've been working on to help write type safe SQL inside of OCaml. Today we're just going to cover some of the basics of what's going on in the library and give you some examples, but we're kind of going to use this project as a launch point to do a few different videos. We're going to talk about parsing, we're going to talk about uh, type safety across different languages, we're going to talk about type algebra because we can kind of do that in OCaml. We're going to talk about snapshot testing. There's going to be a lot of random things that we'll be able to cover through Octane. And so I figured we kind of do some devlog style videos and just chit chat about it. So what is Octane? Octane is a query builder. And what that means is it's not an ORM. It's not an active record style thing where you request something from the database and you operate on that object and then maybe call like save at the end. No, instead, Octane is about constructing type safe SQL inside of OCaml and then being able to confidently interact with your database in the same way that it feels like interacting with the rest of your system. One of the things that makes me very like sad when I'm writing OCaml and talking to a database today is when the program compiles, I don't feel as safe or confident that it's going to do what I want as compared to when I'm iterating internally within my system, right? This sort, there's a sort of like outside world that isn't sitting in the same type safe, confident, Hindley Milner type system, all this good stuff uh, land. And every time you have that, there's just more opportunities to break. And so I kind of want to bring that feeling of like, okay, I'm, I'm writing OCaml, it compiled, I'm confident that I at least don't have dumb type errors, right? At least I know that when I say I have a list of integers, I actually have a list of integers, not sometimes a string, this kind of problem, right? And so I wanted to bring that safety and that feeling to OCaml with Octane. And so that's what, that's what we're working on doing. So like I said, uh, I want the CRUD operations to be really easy. I want SQL operations to be type safe. I don't want it to be that you learn some complete new DSL where you have to construct these in some new way and you're not sure where, oh, I know in SQL we put the from here, but this one for some reason has from at the beginning. No, 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 we don't have to do any of that. And, you know, I want it to be really nice to use. So what? So some of those are already done. I have some things for deriving all of the necessary SQL, uh, sort of SQL operations for managing tables. We have some basic support for really cool queries. And I'm probably going to do more stuff because I'm having a lot of fun working on the project. So let's just give you a few examples of this and then we'll call it a day for this video and we'll come back for more another time. So this is an OCaml struct here. And what we have here is this module. Okay, and in this module, we define a new type. All right, and in this type, we have something like an ID, a name, and a middle name. And you'll notice here that I made the ID a primary key. Okay, and so this stuff right here, this deriving table and this primary key, that comes from Octane. That's me and those are things that are happening. What happens here is we now create a user.table field here where we're able to do something like drop and create tables, okay? So because we put this deriving table here, we're able to later do this drop table and create table. This is the same exact thing that's going on here with the post table, which you can see here has an author which reference the user and also has an ID and content, right? And we once again derive table and so that gives us these drop and creates. So that's the first thing. And the general idea for how I'm thinking about Octane at the moment is I want to define sort of the, the truth, the state of truth, the one place that we're going to look for truth in the OCaml code. And then we will force the database to be in that state through either migrations or whatever it's going to be. I haven't exactly figured out how that aspect is going to work, but I want the state of truth to be in OCaml because that will let me feel confident that whenever I'm working on something that is a post that I have all the correct data and all the correct fields. So that part's kind of the easy part. I mean, it's cool that we derive these functions automatically. They just show up on your type for you, but we can definitely do cooler than this. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is how we have the ability to insert records. Now this is sort of the, this is the create part. This is pretty easy, right? And we have user create. And what you'll notice here is if you're looking at this, we have named parameters here, right? Name and middle name. And that comes from this name and middle name that we have here. And it's not required to put the ID in. In fact, it's not allowed in this case because we're just auto incrementing a key. We'll probably have some different methods coming up for that, but this name and middle name are derived from the same situation. If we tried to do names or something like that, it's gonna tell me, hey, 
uh, this function actually only takes name to string, not names, right? So we have to do this, right? So we get type safety automatically. It's not like passing some dictionary of keys. These named parameters have the correct type associated with them. Uh, beyond that, we get that both for the user and the post, right? And they both sort of return the newly created object. So that's the that's the simple part. Again, we're just doing the basics of create right here where we're inserting a new uh, either user or post in this case. And you'll notice we use the user ID here that we get from this first statement to do this. But here's where things get, uh, I'll, I'll say, you know, to my own horn, quite a bit more interesting. And what happens here is that we can start writing queries. And this at first is going to be confusing because this sure looks like SQL, uh, but it's just a string. And this is where Octane's magic really starts to come into play. What we do inside of Octane, and I'll detail this in a further video, is we actually take this string at compile time and we parse the SQL sort of statement, whatever's going on inside of here, and then generate corresponding OCaml functions and uh, like interactions with the database into a new module called username, this module that's specified here. So this user.id is actually tracked to this user table. If I tried to do user IDs, you'll say, hey, uh, unbound value, right? This doesn't have IDs. Did you mean ID? So even though this is inside of a string, right? Well, this is just a regular string here. Uh, we're able to give you type safety to make you feel confident that, oh, I'm not selecting like a field that doesn't exist. I didn't fat finger any field names. I'm actually accessing tables that truly exist. All of these kinds of difficulties we're trying to work to solve so that when your OCaml code compiles, you're like, oh, it actually works the way that I want it to work. So then how does using this look? Well, in this user table example, you'll see here that we have a username query, right? That's the query from this module. And we just get back a list of users. That list of users is the type of this module, which is automatically inferred to have ID, name, and middle name. Now, this isn't like inference like, oh, it's a dictionary that has these things. No, it's a proper record and proper type in OCaml. It, either will have these values or this will have erred earlier. Uh, you can see this in the query itself. It takes a database and then it returns either a username T list or an error. And so we can iterate over the values and we have ID, name, and middle name here, right? And we're able to iterate over them and print them off. If we looked at how that looks here, that would look something like this where we have a uh, username here and username here. So that's sort of what that looks like as we're iterating over there. Now, what's very cool about this is if I go back to this and I delete the username, you can already see it. Uh, the, it's spoiled. It's spoiled. It's going to say, hey, you haven't given me a name field in the username T, right? So when I change this query, right, and we put in username back, it works. And when we remove it, it doesn't work. And so these types and the values themselves are inferred from the SQL that you're writing. So you have this sort of natural, oh, I already know how to write SQL, but then you get the type safety added on top of it in OCaml. And this goes beyond simple select statements. At, at some point, we'll do even more complicated queries than this, but I already have certain things like basic joins where we have like an inner join user on user ID equals post author. If we say post authors, that won't work because it's actually author, right? And we have where, and you'll notice here, yep, you got it. That's a parameterized query, okay? And so now when we use this get post option here, what we see is we're gonna have get post query and then this is the value that we need to pass to the query. This query, as opposed to the first one, which had no parameters, requires that you pass this in. If we change this value to be user, this is gonna say, hey, um, I'm pretty sure I only take users, which is correct. And we can switch this back to here to get user ID again. And then once again, once we return this, we get back a git post.t, so a new type from here, which contains the name, author, and content. And you'll see name, content, and we don't care about the other stuff right now. So we just print those off. So that's sort of the basics of what's going on in Octane. If you're interested in me posting some more stuff about this, uh, how we do the parsing, all these other goodies, uh, I think they'd make some fun videos. So just let me know in the comments if you think that that would be really fun. 
Um, oh, and the other thing is, uh, I recently released a course with boot.dev about memory management. Uh, it's pretty cool, I think, and it's a lot of fun. So I'll post the link in the description here if you want to go to boot.dev and uh, check that out. It's like learning C, building a simple garbage collector for an object system that you make. So if you like my teaching style, you can check that out and use promo code TEACH for 25% off. Okay, anyways, bye. Thanks, everybody. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll start posting some more again. Bye.